Greetings, fellow lightsaber wielders, builders, and force users. Today I'm here to review, reveal, and make an online manual for the person that's purchasing this saber. Um, it's leaving for London early next week, um, or just outside of London in the UK, close to Elstree Studios, ironically. So uh, that was pretty cool news. This is going to be right down the street from where it all started. Um, basically, what we tried to do with this conversion is finally solve the problem that when you buy a lightsaber, we've always had to choose between an LED grow and retract or extend and retract LED string blade from Master Replicas or Hasbro or make the decision to remove the blade permanently and change it over to a single inhalt LED system. Um, and so for years everyone on the forums has been like, why isn't there a saber out there where I don't have to choose? Why can't it all be interchangeable? Or switchblade. Um, so here we go. This is the first in the world that I know of. Um, finally figured it out, got it locked down, been working on this for a very long time, Going, gone through lots of testing, um, so here we go, Jedi Arms Dealers Outpost Reveal. Um, first off, I'll show off the wood box slash carrying case, because you got a handle here. It does latch, by the way. I just have it set in partial open mode um, to show off the programmable LED light inside, so it does latch. Um, so let's go ahead and show you guys what all the box can do. It comes with a remote control. Um, the light uses three AAA batteries. You just unscrew this housing and exposes the batteries. You change them, you screw it back in. Easy enough. Um, it's got all kinds of modes on it. You can select your color. I'm going to go with red, green, blue or pretty much any color on the spectrum of the rainbow. I mean we've got oranges in here and yellows and all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, my favorite mode is to put it in pulse mode and select red and then just to make Anakin's saber look like it's turned to the dark side. There you go. And then uh, if you want to add to the effect, you can always fire up the saber. So, we've got the electronic blade plug-in. I'm going to explain that here in a second, but basically this is what it would look like with it all eliminated. Pretty eerie sound coming out of there with the lid half closed. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and start on the saber. Let's shut off the LED light. And um, talk about this. Let's get the box out of the way. So, here we go. This is basically if Master Replicas or Hasbro had taken their saber to the next level on a mass producible market, um, is, is what we tried to accomplish here. And so, to have a little fun with the Greeblies which we all like to do, um, made it so that the top button is removable and replaceable. You can put it right back. Um, this has been coated with clear coat and then the button has been epoxied and covered with epoxy. So this is pretty scratch resistant. Of course, you know, if you drop it on the cement or something, no. It's not going to protect it against that. But against light scuffing, things like that, both buttons have been coated. The original copper buttons or copper chromed effect plastic buttons have been coated and protected. So here we go. Even with the gloves on, by the way, I'm wearing these uh, because I just polished up this saber and I don't don't really want to get fingerprints on it before I ship it out. Um, so here we go. Easy as this. You just unscrew it and part one comes out of the button and then your retainer ring part two. And you'll see there's two little channels in there that line up when you pop it in. So, if you're wondering why it was set up this way, let's do the bottom, same deal, counterclockwise. 
and it threads right out. So basically, the reason I decided to do it this way is this hilt, when you do the conversion, can be made to uh, have some really cool in-hilt lighting effects. And so when we fire up the saber and the electronic blade plug gets going, there we go. We get some really nice, now I got the lights on because I want you guys to see the details of the saber and how everything works first, so it's kind of hard to see. Um, the shine through reflects, but you get the idea. And then on the bottom we got the same thing. And so basically this has been drilled through the plastic housing that comes with the Master Replica Saber um, on the bottom and on the top and then etched in some places to give it some extra shine through effects. It looks really cool uh, with the lights off, which I'll show you later. Now as far as the electronic blade plug goes, what's been done differently, so severely differently, with this Saber is that the connection system has been completely uh, revamped and basically what it has inside is a computer data connection, Ethernet or whatever you want to call it, um, on the inside of the hilt and so I don't know if you can see in there but there it is. That is the female end of the Ethernet connection in a metal housing. Um, also this plastic um, housing has been hollowed out to accept now one inch blades. So any type of blade from the custom Saber Shop, Saber Forge, uh, any of those guys selling one inch blades, and I've got a bunch here to show that actually come with the Saber, um, can be put in here. Now the blade plug has the female side of the Ethernet port. And the great thing about this system, which is on the electronic blade plug and all of the included blades, uh, is I personally feel that this is, and it's been tested a lot, is a much better system than the DIN plugs uh, that, that, are, that are used on some conversions and also the DIN plug on the Hasbro Signature Series Sabre's removable blade that come out. I mean, those are pretty fragile. They can bend if they drop, the plastic housing cracks. This stuff is really strong, um, and it's more like a copper connection system that just lays flat in there. So much less chance of getting damaged. Um, whenever I insert anything into the Sabre to make sure it gets a good connection, I always like to fire it up first. So let's turn it on. And basically what you do is, if you're looking at the top of the hilt, you line up the copper tabs. Let's see if you can see them on here. Um, and basically when you look at the connector, the part of the connector that has uh, you know, the copper showing the most is going to go up towards the top of the hill. So you're just going to slide this in and you'll feel it click and make connection and that fires up the electronic blade plug. Now the really cool thing about an electronic blade plug versus regular blade plugs is um, it uses the same technology uh, that, the, that the ignition uses on, on the blade, on the Master Revolution blade or the Hasbro blade where it lights up the blade in segments. And so there's six blue flickering LEDs inside of this electronic blade plug. So when you fire it up, the LEDs actually ignite in a clockwise pattern. Real hard to see on camera. And then when you, of course, when you shut it off, they turn off in a counterclockwise pattern. And I used blue flickering LEDs because I wanted it to look like a shorted out light, uh, lightsaber when it was fired up. So let's see if we can See it from the side maybe a little better. I'll try I'll like, turn it on and off a couple times. So, ignition on, clockwise. Ignition off, counterclockwise. Um, again, it's not real obvious on camera, but when you're holding the emitter and looking right at it, you can see it. Um, so that pretty much explains the blade plug. I try to make the blade plugs a nice snug fit so you don't necessarily have to tighten the retention screw. Um, it's in there nice, and so you can you know, swing it around. Also, if you've ever done one of the Anakin Revenge of the Sith conversions to a single inhale LED, then you know um, that the shock sensor is mounted inside the LED string blade, and so this is a little more challenging because you gotta move that sensor into the hilt so that the <clears throat> clash sounds 
uh, work even with the blade out. So that's, of course, been done on this saber. Here we go, just to showcase it real quick. You got all your swing sounds good to go. And all your flashes. All right, inside the hill. So let's move on to the first blade. And here we have a blue day blade. This is uncut, so it's the longest blade you can get. Uh, from the custom saber shop um, and so has the bullet tip it has the chrome looking diffusion material inside all fitted nicely and then the new cool thing is there's an aluminum housing that's been placed very securely in the end of the blade and what we do is we take one of our five included bulbs let's see what color we should start with well, let's just start with white for fun. And what I've done is marked these. That has a silver ring around it. You can see this is a Cree LED. I can't really see it on camera too well. There we go. There's a green Cree LED, all high powered. And then we have blue and red. And this is an ultraviolet light, kind of like you see black lights at, um, oh, you know, Spencer's and stuff like that, where you put it up against neon glowing material. So the bulb isn't very bright because it's a black light, but it's really cool to put it in the dagger size blade and hold it up against uh, neon reflective material and it gets really bright. So we'll, we'll do that one last. So let's go ahead and take our white bulb. And even with the gloves on, that's another reason I kind of want to showcase it this way, is you can, <clears throat> all you do, because this is threaded, and this has a threaded female end, is you screw in the high-powered LED in white, and you just rotate it into place. Oh, hold on a sec, let me flip it around. <clears throat> Since I am left-handed. Flip it around and you screw it into place. And there, it's secure. Now, what I like to do, again, when I insert any of the blades, whether they be LED string blades or the high powered LED, single die LEDs, is fire up the saber first. And then we're going to, again, take the copper contacts towards the top and slide it straight in until we see the blade come on. And there you go. There's your white and a blue day blade. Um, and I'll show these off with the lights off um, after we go through all the blade, different blades we got here. So it doesn't hurt anything to pull the blade in and out while it's ignited. But the big thing you never want to do with this type of blade connection system or even a dim blade connection system with multi pins is twist the blade like you do with your single inhale high powered LEDs. So we're just gonna pull it straight out. And again, it doesn't matter if the saber's on or off. So pull it straight out, blade shuts off. Okay? On to the next blade. We're gonna do all of the high powered LED bulb blades first. So next we're going to go to, I believe this is green. And we'll flip it around. <clears throat> Rotate it in there, just like the other one. Into the housing, just like a good old light bulb. Just till it stops. Again, fire up the saber hilt. And here we go. Copper contacts to the top. Nice and easy. And there's a really bright green. Um, this blade right here is actually what we're calling a recycled blade because this was the original Master Replicas LED string blade that came with the Sabre. Um, and we gutted it, took all the electronics out, put it in a better blade, and then used the hollow tube as like a, a light to medium battle blade. So there you go. That's with the green LED installed. Let's move on to our Shoto length blade. 
And let's see, let's choose, um, let's choose blue for this one. And we're going to insert it in the end, rotate the blade or the bulb into place till it stops, fire up your saber, and copper contacts towards the top, slide it in, nice and snug, and there's blue. Okay, next blade is the dagger blade, and we are going to start with the red LED. These are all Cree. We'll rotate them into place. And here we go again. Ignition. Doesn't matter if you're left handed or right handed, copper contacts to the top, slide it in until it clicks. And here we go. Red. And there's your dagger. And all your clash sounds. Everything's working great. So here now you can see better, a little better. Or maybe not. The inhale lighting effects. I'll show those off again when I shut the lights off. I'm gonna stop the video, shut the lights off, and then come back. Uh, well, one last bulb I wanted to show you. And this is how easy it is to do it. Pull your blade out. Again, unscrew your bulb. Take the red out, set it to the side. And let's get the black light bulb, screw it into place. And this one's kind of cool for the dagger blade length because this is not a very bright bulb, but it does some cool effects again on, um, on, oh, there it is. Some really cool effects on fluorescent material. So, there's the dagger. Alright, now, where it gets really interesting, now that we've shown you all the high-powered inhaled LEDs, let's move on to the stock mass for replica string blade electronics. Um, let me make sure I got the right color here before I show you on camera. Nope. So we'll leave the saber hilt on, and here is the stock Master Replica's blue Anakin blade that comes with it, and there we go. And it is an LED string, and uses all of the different connection tabs inside the connector to make it sequence up and down. Hopefully you can catch that on camera. Yep, actually see the reflection in the, in the table, so there's that. And when you're done with the blue and you decide to turn to the dark side, pull out the red one. Take the saber. And here we go. Red. And again. Sequence off. Sequence on. And clash sounds. There you go. Blade out. Um, this also, of course, comes with the four copper contacts that go in the holes on each side here that are the stock master replica copper contacts. Um, I'm going to leave them out because I think it looks really cool with the light shining through all around the hilt, uh, but they will be included, of course. And then um, yeah, let me shut the video off and let's move on to uh, turning the lights off, see how these things look.